Uh, welcome to part two of module two. This will be focusing particularly only on non tax revenue, which is uh, the neglected component of public finance. So, in this part of the lecture, I will focus on how we can really leverage on non tax revenue to raise funds to finance the sustainable development uh, in Africa, particularly the Sustainable Development Goals of 2030. This part of the slide highlights the key components that we are going to discuss today. Uh, starting with NTR or non-tax revenue as a source of development finance, we will move into the overview of the lecture itself and also some stylized facts in relation to the non-tax revenue, the source of non-tax revenue, components of non-tax revenue, which helps us to compile the statistics on the overall non tax revenues that can be mobilized. As you can see on the first line of this slide, there is a huge opportunity missed if we don't uh, collect non tax revenue. Our estimate indicates about 4% of the Africa GDP can be assigned to non tax revenue or the total amount of financing that we can mobilize uh, is to the tune of 4% of the continent's GDP, which is uh, not negligible. We will discuss a little bit about the role of national and subnational governments, trends in non-tax revenue, and the link between non-tax revenue and tax revenue, mainly because in the political economy literature, there are empirical evidences and some conjecture which argues as follows. In countries where you raise a lot of non-tax revenue or if your public finance is predominantly from non-tax revenue, you didn't collect it from the electorate or from the population, therefore you will be less accountable. Therefore you will also collect less in terms of tax, therefore that suggests a negative correlation between non-tax revenue and tax revenue. Whether that is the case or not, we will look at parametric and non-parametric evidence from a cross-section of countries in Africa uh, observed across time. So the cross-national large database gives us an, uh, an idea of the potential correlation between these two. Uh, variables. And we will look into this correlation by sub-region because the effort in collecting taxes as well as non-tax uh, revenue sources is different from country to country. We will be concluding by looking into briefly uh, institutional and regulatory environment and political economy considerations like the one I mentioned. Now, the, some of the stylized facts and the facts behind non-tax revenue. And it is staggering to me and uh, many observers that when you read uh, a lot about public finance, the discussion predominantly focuses on tax revenue. And uh, th that is fair uh, because taxes are very, very important. But at the same time, there is a non-tax revenue component that we have to focus on. This is mainly because Africa is rich in many resources, oil, minerals, and so on. And there are realities and other monetary advantages that are coming associated with those uh, resources. Therefore, uh, where, where does a component of the government revenue uh, going? It, it should be captured as a non-tax revenue. The big problem is Anything non-tax is just non-tax revenue and everything that you cannot consider is going to be a non-tax revenue. Therefore, in terms of technically measuring and estimating it, is, it might be very, very tricky. But it doesn't really mean that uh, countries cannot have a conscious effort in collecting non-tax revenue. Therefore, in having that in mind as a background, uh, I will just highlight some of the stylized facts. I had the privilege of writing the non-tax revenue chapter of economic report on Africa uh, 2019. Uh, therefore, all what I'm discussing in this component of the lecture recording uh, 
for the training course according, uh, it is going to be based on that background paper that fed the chapter on land tax revenue in economic report on Africa. Uh, through the research, we found that as opposed to tax revenue, non-tax revenue is highly volatile uh, as figure 4.1 in chapter four of that report shows and is poorly collected. Uh, that's why I think sometimes it is invisible and we don't see it, it is hidden. And there is a lot of political economy considerations that should come to mind because uh, in countries where institutions of uh, government are not of high quality or transparent or accountability is uh, an issue, uh, you can understand why it is poorly reported, why it is volatile and poorly collected. But for volatility, there are other reasons as well, because uh, much depends on the international commodity market. In Africa, governments are keenly aware of the importance of domestic resource mobilization. And this is consistent with what we were saying all along and its potential positive impact on development in the face of dealing declining ODA, in the face of declining foreign aid and increasing external debt, which was underscored very, very much emphatically in module one uh, and which is also a very uh, live and daily headache for uh, finance ministers, central bank governors, and African governments in general, and shrinking access to international capital markets. So in this context, the importance of any external, uh, no, any extra uh, revenue will be most welcome uh, because the fiscal state or the fiscal space of many African governments is devastated, particularly in the wake of this horrible pandemic COVID-19. In the face of rising debt, fiscal consolidation shouldn't be the only focus on tax revenue, but also it should focus on non-tax revenue mobilization, particularly for resource-rich African countries. Uh, and particularly during a super commodity cycle or during commodity price swings favorably towards those rich countries' exports. At the beginning of the pandemic, we know that the international commodity price was very, very bad. Now, particularly oil has recovered a lot and those countries can really make advantage of the proceeds that they get from such uh, maybe the only and the final commodity super cycle uh, so that they can really find some physical space and to stabilize their economies in the face of rising external debt. So it is a very important avenue that is neglected. The non-tax revenue component in public finance, I argue, is neglected and also a missed opportunity. There is sufficient fiscal space that enables Africa to increase its non-tax revenue from various sources. This neglected often deliberately due to corruption, source of revenue should be harnessed for Africa's future economic development. And I think everybody agrees on that. Finally, Africa can mobilize considerable non-tax revenue from its natural resource endowments. Non-tax revenue can be earmarked for several for, this, for service provision and infrastructure investment in collaboration with private sector uh, via PPP arrangements, uh, public par uh, private partnerships. Uh, in terms of this claim, when we say that there is a considerable non tax revenue potential from the natural resource endowment, one area of improvement is looking into existing contracts uh, with multinational companies who are uh, working in the natural resource area in, in Africa. In the 1970s, 60s, when we study investment patterns and investment arrangements between governments and foreign companies, uh, revising contracts uh, was much easier and there was a, a framework built in, uh, but currently, it's not that, that easy. Therefore, uh, 
uh, even if we have a potential to raise non-tax revenue, our capacity to raise it through co contract renegotiations might be limited. But there should be a way to really even collect existing uh, non-tax revenue sources uh, carefully, because the first line of this slide highlights that they're poorly collected as uh, figure two of ERA chapter four, uh, 2019 shows. Okay, now we make an argument whether non-tax revenue is worth the effort to collect and whether we can really use it for development purposes. And that is very important. And I argue that yes, we can use it as a development finance source and we, should, uh, we shouldn't shy away from collecting it. The data that we have used for this part of the analysis that I'm sharing with you, uh, is based on cross country database uh, from 51 African countries uh, observed for a period of uh, almost uh, 37 years. And that is from 1970 to 2016. Yeah, uh, okay, 20 plus, yeah, 37 years. So this study shows that non-tax revenue can be an important source of development finance. In real terms, for instance, by 2014, African countries mobilized 82.7 billion in non-tax revenue, which can be a significant contributor to the funds needed for SDGs. This amount, to put it into perspective, is more than 44 billion that Africa gets in official development assistance uh, in 2016, or it is about 27% of the 230 billion annual financing gap for investment uh, for the region. So it, it is very, very important. And we, we also are aware of this infrastructure gap statistics, which is uh, floating around in Africa. And every key official of multilateral banks, such as the African Development Bank, key officials uh, in UNECA, and other international organizations cite that the African infrastructure gap is about 90 billion annually. Therefore, if we are collecting or if we are missing on the opportunity of collecting non-tax revenue, we are technically removing ourselves from the chance of grabbing the potential to cover the, infra the infrastructural financial or financing gap that we are always talking about. Therefore, that's why I argue that non-tax revenue is a fundamental and essential part of development finance for Africa. And you'll be surprised that the discussion about non-tax revenue and uh, research surrounding non-tax revenue is very, very limited for Africa. So it is an opportunity that we should uh, tap on, tap into. The potential of revenue mobilization via non-tax revenue is greater than the 50 billion US dollar lost due to illicit financial flows annually. So therefore, uh, we are really sitting on a very lucrative source of development finance. But when we are talking non-tax revenue, what are really the components? Because in, in tax terms, we know we have the usual classification of direct indirect taxes and, and so on. But what are the components of non-tax revenue? The major sources include grants, property income, fines, resource rents, and sale of goods and services by the public sector. And figures 4.6 gives you the pictorial representation of these components. The composition of non-tax revenue is heterogeneous across countries, for sure, because sometimes in some countries, grants are very, very important. For instance, if you take Rwanda. And resource rents are very, very important in resource-rich countries, such as Cameroon. However, from a political economy perspective, non-tax revenue are, or sources or components are notoriously difficult because uh, there is the enclave or captive nature of resources, uh, or meaning the political elite, 
particularly if you have poor institutional quality and also high incidence of uh, corruption, uh, they are abused uh, and they are not uh, transparently reported. So the income that is coming from NTR is characterized by this enclave uh, or captive nature of uh, the resources that you can get. And we have the international commodity prices, which are also affecting the volume of non-tax revenues that uh, we are raising. Therefore, uh, the volatility in international commodity prices is reflected in the volatility of non-tax revenue. So you cannot always say, oh, 17% out of the total GDP is my tax revenue annually. So it is hard to trace in those terms because of the volatility uh, that is coming one from corruption, looting, capital flight, plus uh, volatility in international commodity markets, uh, to which we are uh, always exposed. The last element is uh, an institutional point, and it says many African countries don't have a well-functioning local government revenue system for NTR mobilization. Uh, in this context, we have to consider whether we are collecting non-tax revenue at federal level or at sub-national level. And there are possibilities to do at both levels and it should be done at both levels. For instance, for local government related uh, activities, uh, re resource rent, fines and penalties, this can be collected at each and every level of government. And it's not clear how these are collected and channeled to the treasure. And there are improvements in some countries and there are also failures in others. So it is not really bad everywhere, but uh, there are positive news uh, coming from some countries. So what is the governance structure and the institutional uh, arrangements? Some have improved their governance structures for effective revenue mobilization. When we say revenue, it has a tax revenue component as well as a non-tax revenue component for completeness. And we should really remember that, including non-tax revenue at all levels of government. For instance, this was made possible in Ethiopia, not a resource-rich country, but uh, in fines uh, and uh, penalties, collection, it is, well organized at all levels of government. Similarly, Benin reinforced its non-tax revenue collection via reality payments from the telecom sector. And similar efforts can be done by other countries. So that is from the governance side. What about from the macro perspective? From a macro perspective, some African countries registered good progress in seizing the opportunity of good growth to mobilize non-tax revenue in the last decade. Algeria, Ethiopia, Mozambique, Morocco, Rwanda, and Senegal have done this, while others fell to fulfill the expectations due to poor fiscal discipline and exogenous shocks. Therefore, the problem is not always uh, the country's governance structure, but also the exogenous shocks such as uh, international commodity uh, price prices. So, the countries that we identified as working below the par or below expectations were uh, Cameroon, Gabon, Ghana, and Sudan. Uh, very much a lot of resource rich countries there. So let's look at this relationship between tax revenue and non tax revenue. The political economy literature says that if you collect a lot of taxes, you are responsible to your electorate. Therefore, you have to provide services. But this same literature says that some governments, particularly governments in resource-rich countries, they can get information, they can get revenue from non-tax revenue sources. Therefore, this non-tax revenue is not collected from citizens. In that case, they are going to be less accountable to the population. And if this theory is working, we should be able to see a negative correlation between non-tax revenue and tax revenue because if governments get it from NTR or non-tax revenue, they are not going to be bothered so much to collect tax revenue. This is the trust of the argument. Whether that is the case or not, 
based on the evidence of 37 years for the 51 countries, uh, I run some non-parametric regression uh, using the locally weighted uh, regression technique, which is a very powerful indicator whether we have a relationship between the non-tax revenue and tax revenue, one, two, the functional form of the relationship, two. Okay. Our non-parametric econometric analysis showed the heterogeneous correlation between tax and non-tax revenue, dispelling the simplistic overgeneralization in the extant political economy literature of a negative correlation between them. So we cannot really, we didn't find that uh, argument holding tightly uh, when we subject to this conjecture to the data. While sub-regional analysis shows a positive relationship between them in Eastern and Western Africa, actually they co-move because countries are really putting an effort to collect both non-tax revenue and tax revenue. In the remaining sub-regions, we either have a weak positive correlation, which is okay in Central Africa, and a strong non-linearity for Northern and Southern African sub-region. And I will display those graphs in the coming slides. As you can see, this for the whole of Africa is uh, broadly negative, but it is non-linear too, because if you trace the maroon or the red line, uh, which is uh, characterizing or summarizing the uh, regression relationship non-parametrically, uh, it is like a bell shape. Therefore, there is a non-linear relationship. Again, broadly negative, but still non-linear for the Central African Republic. Positive relationship in West Africa. Therefore, when your effort of collecting taxes increases, your effort of collecting non-tax revenue also increases, which is fantastic. And at the same time, a credit to uh, governments in West Africa. And we have a lot of countries in West Africa which are resource rich as well. So this is an encouraging uh, evidence of 37 years uh, when we map it for those countries in that sub-region. When it comes to North Africa, it's very uh, volatile relationship with multimodal pattern and purely nonlinear, not with any meaningful discernible pattern. Uh, Southern Africa, broadly negative, but clearly, non-linear uh, as because the advantage of the lowest smoother regression technique non-parametrically is that you don't impose any functional form but it will give you an idea if you are going to set up a model linking tax revenue with non-tax revenue therefore in this case you have to allow for quadratic terms in the modeling because of the non-linear relationship uh, so life is not that linear when it comes to linking tax and non-tax revenue. And it is a very, very useful insight. What about parametric evidence? If you take that to regression, we don't just focus on tax and non-tax revenue, but we have to really see uh, the impact of maybe the two of them to growth. Therefore, we will have a, a gross model behind and see whether the tax revenue that we collect, the non-tax revenue we collect is providing any support to economic development in Africa. Well, if you remember prior to providing the non-parametric evidence, I said that we can use, and we should really use non-tax revenue as a source of development finance. To justify that sentence or claim, one should really provide whether there is a positive a strong statistically significant relationship between non-tax revenue and growth, meaning GDP growth, for instance. For that, we can collect data on a number of macro variables, including tax and non-tax revenue, and run a longitudinal or a panel data model on the evidence or on the data that we collect over the 37 years that we uh, have observed the variables for. Therefore, the following is a summary of uh, the parametric evidence, and I will show you the regression in the next slide. A parametric regression, in this case, uh, we have used uh, a fixed effects panel model, 
because a Hausmann test told us that we cannot really fit a random effect span data model to the data because we have really made some tests before uh, going down the line of providing a parametric regression analysis evidence based on fixed effects. Therefore, the fixed effects is an outcome of a test that we have conducted on the specification uh, and before we really present the uh, findings. Okay, uh, let me start again in terms of really summarizing the parametric evidence. A parametric regression analysis shows a positive and significant impact of economic development and exports while imports and sectoral value added are negatively uh, correlated. Uh, and it is a significant impact of a positive nature from non-tax revenue onto uh, the growth of the country. The findings suggest the importance of sustaining economic growth and economic export expansion to reinforce non-tax revenue collection. But at the same time, it should also highlight because non-tax revenues, uh, right-hand side variable, we have to really push and also leverage on a, our existing potential to collect non-tax revenue to promote and sustain economic development. On the other hand, owing to the structure of African economies, the findings also corroborate the fact that agriculture, manufacturing, service sector value added are important uh, for tax and non-tax revenue. And the evidence that we are showing here is determinants of uh, log of GDP of the countries for which we have collected data. So just to see whether non-tax revenue collects to uh, contributes to GDP growth, <coughs> excuse me, just focus on the statistical significance of the coefficient with a Z value of 3.12 and a probability value of 0 0.002, meaning one minus 0 0.002 is close to 100%. So we are more or less more than 99% confident that this coefficient of non-tax revenue is statistically uh, significantly different from zero, meaning non-tax revenue positively contributes to uh, the growth of GDP in, in Africa uh, when we uh, run the regression on the data for the 37 countries. Okay, institutions and regulations. Transparent administrative governance and regulatory frameworks shouldn't only focus on tax revenue. And I have said this before, but it should also focus on non-tax revenue. Therefore, I hope when you are reading about public finance or fiscal policy in the future, you might always remember also this neglected component of the public finance side, which is a non-tax revenue side. For instance, on the use of capital revenue dividend payments of state-owned enterprises and privatization of state-owned enterprises, uh, if any. We know that Africa has been experimenting with privatization since the late 1980s. And currently some countries are aggressively going into liberalization and also privatization of their uh, various sectors. Some of them very lucrative sectors like the telecom in the Ethiopian government side as we speak, it is happening. Therefore, there are a lot of potential non-tax revenue coming from these cells of uh, stacks in previously state-owned enterprises. So this should really be transparently governed and used to good use uh, for the public. The second point is in relation to uh, other regions uh, of the globe, relative to other regions, Inefficient non-tax revenue collection is common, mainly due to lack of systematic, transparent, accountable, coordinated, and regulatory monitor data compilation by various government institutions. Yeah, we have collected a lot of information in the past, but the effort was patchy. But now, if we focus our attention on non-tax revenue as we do on tax revenue, we should really have a systematic, regular revision of the data and also compilation of the data of non-tax revenue. What are the policy recommendations from our analysis and also our uh, discussion so far? 
One, for effective domestic resource mobilization and improve the fiscal space, we propose that countries should monitor their non-tax revenue to GDP ratio, as we are well aware of uh, their constant and regular effort on and commendable effort uh, on tax to GDP ratio uh, tracing. So we should do, do for non-tax revenue, or we should also monitor revenue to GDP ratio. And that revenue should really come both from tax and non-tax revenue. And Mozambique is doing it because th this is very, very useful to, to uh, to replicate in other contexts. So I'm not really suggesting something which is not impossible and which is not done so far, but Mozambique has traced revenue to GDP ratio. So in conclusion, policymakers as well as researchers need to be aware of the inherent challenges of weak national data on non-tax revenue, taxes, and GDP figures. Hence, our findings should be interpreted with caution and one shouldn't design uniform and tax revenue targets across countries because countries are very different in terms of their natural resource endowments, particularly, and also their potential to leverage on reality, mineral reality payments and other non tax revenue sources. There is a need for sustained investment in better data collection in terms of breadth of coverage and quality. Therefore, with that, I will conclude part two of uh, module two. And thank you for listening.